it is time once again, ladies and gentlemen, for a Boruto, Boruto episode review. Uh, this time for episode 4, which aired on the 26th of April 2017. Um, today's episode is going to be a bit different. I'm going to change the formula up a bit, because I've had to think, and I think these episodes go on a little too long. So I'm going to put them into two categories. First one is going to be story, where I just go over the quick plot points of the story. And then there's going to be extras and theories, which is the part where I'll just, you know, touch upon the little things I noticed in the episodes. Um, kind of like in the last episode where I talked about the handheld console they were playing and stuff. Just for little bits like that. So if you're just listening to this just for the plot, then, you know, you can just click off after however many minutes it takes me to discuss that. But anyway, let's dive right into this um, and get the ball rolling. So, on to story. Uh, right, so, the episode starts off with uh, Shino and Kon Konohamaru teaching the students about summoning um, summoning jutsus and stuff and the whole, and you've got to make a contract with the animal and stuff. You can't just summon any old creature. Just cool. I, they probably mentioned this in Naruto, but I honestly forgot that you have to make like, you have to specifically write down the name of the animal in the scroll to summon it and have a contract with them. I I think I just forgot that. But yeah. Anyway, so then the kids start just discussing what animals they'd love to summon, and th this is kind of the theme of the episodes: battle of the sexes, boy boys versus girls. As well, uh, as you'd imagine, the boys all kind of want snakes and spiders and things, and the girls want cute things. Very stereotypical, but you know they are they are kids. But yeah, so they all they all get a token of that, and Boruto comes up with some silly scheme, and then Sarada gets really annoyed with him and tells him to stop making the class look bad and stuff because well he has messed up quite a few times in the past, so she's kind of you know she's in the right there sort of. Anyway, so the, there's a bit of tension. You can tell that they're not particularly good friends. And so then we cut forward to a bit where it's dinner time and they both want some yakisoba buns. I don't think I've ever had a yakisoba bun, but it sounds interesting. Anyway, there is only one left, unfortunately, because someone bought them all. Well, not all of them. There's obviously one left. So this raises the tension between Sarada and Boruto again until... They get to almost fighting, and then Shino appears and decides to set up a fight for them after school to kind of, I don't know, ease the tension, maybe decide who is, well, not who is in the right, but just to clear things up and let them get it out. So the objective uh, he set up is to capture the flag. And the teams obviously are boys versus girls, the boys of the class versus the girls of the class. Um, the, I think the rules are something like don't destroy the school, which is usually a pretty pretty solid rule there. And um, apart from that, I think you know jutsus are allowed and stuff. So I didn't capture many uh, screenshots of the ensuing fight and stuff because it's kind of like I don't know nothing plot wise majorly happened. So I'm just going to put some slides up in the background, kind of quick. Yeah, there's just lots of little fights really. There's nothing hugely important until. The very end, where Boruto makes a a dash for the roof and gets there, but realizes Chocho and the other girls are just in front of him to capture the flag. So he decides to summon something. And what does he summon? Uh, I didn't get a very good clear screenshot of this really, but he summoned a really big snake, a big white snake thing, very akin to Orochimaru's snake, actually. But in doing so, uh, the snake knocks Chocho off the roof. You know, they they go to save her, obviously, because they're not heartless. And in the meantime, I didn't get a screenshot of this either, but Konohamaru destroys the large snake. And at the end of the episode, who ended up with the, getting the flag? Best girl. That's who. I still don't know her name, but she is adorable. So, let's move on to the extra bits. This is uh, things I noticed in the episodes, little... Uh, well, I mean, this not just extra bits. This is also for theories as well, or overarching plot points that I noticed that aren't quite the plot point of the episode. Anyway, let's go ahead with extras and theories. So at the start of the episode, uh, also for clarity, this is going to go chronologically. So the extra bits, while they're few and far between, they are going to go 
with the flow of the episode as well. So right at the start, we see the Kona Hamaru also summons frogs, which is interesting. That frog looks a little different. They didn't give the name, but obviously he's you know from the same realm as Gamma Bunta. And the other frogs that Jiraiya and Naruto and Minato can summon. So it's kind of cool to see you know that Kona Hamaru, because he looks up to Naruto, decided to summon frogs as well. And talking about looking up to Naruto... Uh, the next slide is interesting because Boruto refers to Konohamaru as Big Bro, kind of quite familiar type, which is a mirror of how Konohamaru uh, addressed Naruto in the original series. I thought it was really cool. So it's a role reversal where Konohamaru is like, hey, little kid, stop being so familiar. We're not, you know, best pals. Leave me alone. So that was quite cool. Also, I didn't get a clip of this or anything, but... One of the girls um, in this thing, the one with purple hair, has the same voice actor as Konohamaru, I think. Her voice sounds really, really similar, so I don't know if that's a little Easter egg kind of thing. Maybe that character will be fleshed out later on, and you know we'll realise that it's not Konohamaru's voice actor, actress, actor, I don't know. But yeah, the kid sounded like Konohamaru, which is interesting. So, yeah, further on in the episode, we also get clarification that Sarada is Boruto's childhood friend, which kind of makes sense because their parents, you know, Sakura and um, Sasuke and Naruto are all friends, obviously. So it makes sense that the kids would be friends. Uh, and also, apparently, Sarada is top of the class in terms of shuriken things, which, again, makes sense because Sasuke was, well, Itachi was known for being really good with shuriken, but it's kind of nice because in the flashbacks we saw of Sasuke's childhood, we saw that Itachi was really, really good with Shuriken and that Sasuke wanted to catch up with him, that he wanted to be as good as his big bro. So it's quite cute to see that he's clearly taught Sarada to be really good with Shuriken because that's what he wanted to be as a child. So that's really nice. And then a little, you know, on in that scene, a few seconds later, we see that one of the girls on the girls' team has a tail. Why do they have a tail? Are they a furry? Are they part animal? I I don't know. I Maybe we'll see further on in the series why that girl has a tail. And then, so near the end of the episode, just as Boruto is summoning the weird snake thing, we have a really quick flash of a glowy-eyed shadowy man. Now, we saw this person... We didn't see this person, but we saw someone with glowy eyes at the start of the last episode. So I wonder if maybe this man has something to do with it. I'm not too sure who it is. And then at the end of the episode, we do see the shot of Mitsuki. I don't think that's Mitsuki, though. Maybe, you know, leave a comment if you want, if it clearly is Mitsuki and I'm just avoiding something or clearly ignoring something. But I don't know. It looks like a different character. Arguably, maybe, my theory here, maybe it's the guy that we see teen or adult Boruto fighting right at the start of the first episode. Maybe it's this person and he's going to, you know, appear back and forth. I don't know. Maybe it is Mitsuki, though, as I said. And then, yeah, we, we just get a confirmation near the end that Shino and Konohamaru are talking. And they mentioned that Boruto's ability to summon such a powerful snake doesn't make sense. He doesn't have the right amount of chakra. And obviously, he's not a Jinchuriki or anything. I mean, his father's got a huge amount of chakra, so maybe a passed on. I don't know. That'll be expanded on, though, I imagine. And the episode then ends with a silhouette of a mysterious person. Unless you've seen the Boruto movie, then you know it's Mitsuki, or Orochimaru's son. So, not quite, you know, as big a mystery. And then, next time is the Mysterious Transfer Student, or something like that, I can't remember the title. It is, of course, Mitsuki. So, yeah, this episode was pretty interesting. It was a little more fun. I think it worked to introduce some of the more background characters that clearly will remain more background. You know, but we got introduced to Sarada, and I think that's the main purpose of this episode, to show that her and Boruto don't get along, but they're both quite... They're both quite stubborn in their ways, and I imagine that'll play into, uh, you know, when they become part of the three-man team, as we know from Boruto the movie. Yeah, yeah overall, they were just fun. The the little fights, the boys versus girl fights and stuff, they were, you know, they, they were quite nice. And we do have a few setups for other plot points to come. So I'm really looking forward to next week's, actually, because Mitsuki is a, well, he's a mysterious character. And I just want to know more about him.
But yeah, that about wraps up uh, my review discussion analysis thing of episode four of Boruto. Thank you very much for watching, and I will be back again this time next week. Goodbye.